giving him a ride to the press conference. Now, if I did or said or anything that made you feel that I was intimidating you, I apologize for that because I'm not a gangster. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Hey, man. I don't do anything to try to intimidate anyone. Amen. And I felt threatened when that came in to me. I'm like, what? why would he say that? So I want you to address if that's true. I won't take that any further because the person that told me that might be lying. So you can't always go by how a person feels. So people say that they're being intimidated or whatever, you know. Some people are intimidated by a big black guy. Amen. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. They Amen. just see a big black man and they intimidate. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? So you need to investigate Amen. what's going on. I, I, I make a lot of people upset and afraid just by my voice. It's a trade in the Goodman family. We talk loud and we talk deep. And people are intimidated by that. Amen. But we got no bad people. We don't go around beating up on people Amen. or mistreating people. Once you get to know the Goodmans, they're some pretty decent people. They're some pretty nice people. But you might, your first impression of a Goodman might be that they mean, they angry, they violent. So I understand that. So I'm telling you, Councilman Nolan, please, when you get a chance to speak, because you can't speak right back to me, which I think is kind of stupid, but, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with that. But when you get a chance to speak, I want you to address, was that a true statement coming from somebody to let me know that you wasn't intimidated by me? I'm not trying to intimidate you because I'm not a gangster. I'm a law-abiding citizen trying to make the city of Flint better. Don't come against me. Don't lash out against me. Go out there and deal with them gangsters. Mr. Goodman, can you sum up, please? Okay, go out there and deal with them killers. The real people just cause the problem in the city. Not people like me. Don't deal with me like that because I'm not that guy. Deal with them real criminals and gangsters like that, not me. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to wait till the end. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Jerry Preston. Mr. Preston. Uh, President Kincaid, council members, I, I'm unaccustomed to appearing here, although I've been here several times, but the Karagandi water thing has been something I've been looking into, and I wanted to address some of the findings I had last uh, council meeting, but that got canceled. So I sent you all a letter and sent you copies of some of the questions I thought some of the new council should be addressing. Uh, what I've left on your desk today is the comparison of two water bills, Flint versus Flint Township. And it's kind of interesting. It's my water bill versus one I've gotten in Flint Township. And the amount of water is 15 times in uh, the Flint Township bill, and the Flint bill is, is just one unit. Yet it's $66 for my Flint bill, and it's $100. $73, only a three to one difference. So I went back and recalculated both these bills using the Flint bill on the township rate and the township bill on the Flint rate. And you can see that no matter how you look at this thing, our cost of water is two to three times what the cost of that water in Flint Township is. Now when you recognize that the city of Flint sells water to the county and the county sells the water to the township and there's billing and other markups all through there, you kind of wonder how is that possible? Now, I do understand that one of you must have rec uh, forwarded my letter that I sent you to Howard Croft. Howard says I've got an email coming with all these answers to this sort of thing. But one of the things I think you also need to look at as I was watching you uh, look at the audit tonight is that when you give up the sales of water to the county and they to the townships, how much revenue is that going to reduce the city from? Because obviously there's some billing and markup that happens there. So I just wanted to you to have this information, and I appreciate the time, and it's just a little bit of my research that I thought would be helpful to you. Thank you, Jerry. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is A.C. Dumas. Good evening, A.C. Good evening, Mr. Kincaid. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I am a resident of the city of Flint also host a live broadcast, The Truth Shall Make You Free, Saturday mornings, Flint's Gospel Radio Station, 1420 AM at 930. 
I've had some very interesting guests on my show, including the mayor, the police chief, Congressman Dan Kildee last week, week before last. And last week, I had attorneys Greg Gibbs and Alex Gibbs. And they are representing Urge and the plaintiffs that filed a lawsuit against the emergency manager in the city of Flint. And one of the questions I asked was, will, if the courts remain in the favor of the plaintiffs and say what the emergency manager did was wrong, will that cause the city of Flint to file bankruptcy? I asked that question. The attorney says no. And they're putting out this that the city of Flint will have to file bankruptcy. I said, well, explain the difference between Detroit and Flint. You all should really tune in. It's a really good show. It, it really is a good show. And I pay for it out of my pocket. So I, I, you can't. I ain't, I ain't bought now, of course. I don't know. I guess everybody has a price, but uh, the truth shall make you free. And the attorney said the difference between Detroit and Flint is that Detroit owes billions to banks and other uh, financial entities. Amen. Said that is the difference. And because the city of Flint gave away their assets, now they want to run and say, hey, we need to file bankruptcy. They say, no, no, no. The court's going to say, no. You gave away your trucks. You, you took money and tore down Genesee Towers that we paid for. Amen. You've given away all your access. Amen. Assets. Amen. Now you can't run and say, now we want to file bankruptcy. They will, at Wood State, they will not allow the city of Flint to file bankruptcy. And one of the key issues of the Court of Appeals was this. You cannot do your budget on the backs of the retirees because it was something. See, my dad was, a, before he died, he was a, a General Motors salary, and they did my dad and, and our family wrong. But subsequently, we had mom who was a retiree on hourly. So that helped out. So you cannot have righteous expectations when they worked Amen. that they were going to have health benefits. And most of them retired years ago. They're, when you get older, you have more health issues. You know, I used to have a lot of hair, but I don't have no more hair. <laughs> we have health issues. Amen. So I take, uh, I ain't going to say offense, but. Mr. Dumas, you've got one. Okay, minute, well, let me sir. go to this point because I want this answer. The state has a billion dollar surplus. They cut revenue sharing to poor cities. I would make a request that council, the, the emergency manager, remember we are the child of the state, right. that they forgive the debt. They got a million dollar surplus, and ours is only about $13 million. I would ask that you go and ask them to forgive the debt. Maybe they will. Because after all, they did cut revenue sharing from the board of ed, from the city of Flint, from other cities, poor cities, all that. And you all tune into the, the, the Councilman Kincaid called in. Tune in to the truth shall make you free, because it will. Thank you, Mr. Dumas. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Chris Del Moroni. Mr. Del Moroni.
Good evening, Chris. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Moroni, and I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, I, I don't know, do we need more of these at, at City Hall? I mean, that was a lot of snow we got that we received. It was an act of God. I don't think anyone prayed for it, maybe for Christmas. But the service was terrible. The service that we received is not worth paying the taxes for. They should have just left the snow until the temperature got up to about 40 degrees and it melted or rained away, because that's what they did on my street. They came by Saturday. I didn't receive mail since January 4th. Thanks a lot, Flint. And then you wonder why people are leaving? Raise the water bills some more. Everyone blames the water bill rates on a, the financial manager. Yeah, we can do that. But how about this mayor we have right here? 70% within 12 months. Throw the blame around er everyone, because they all deserve it. You've got to be kidding me. You know, I look at the Flint Journal, our paper, and they got a picture of a, a front loader. I think, I think that's what you call it. It's got a big scoop on the front end. You know where they were plowing the streets at? Some alley downtown Flint. I wonder how many cars went through that alley. I wonder how many people died in that alley trying to shovel their snow. I wonder how many people had a call for emergency services to go to dialysis, to go to the hospital for heart conditions. You've got to be kidding me. Mr. Early, if you want to do something for the city, do this. Rustle away that Rutherford parking structure from the Downtown Development Authority. They don't deserve it. They can't afford the payments on it. Hmm. We're paying for it. We don't want to do it. If nothing else, we want a parking deck that we can park in for free when we come down here at Downtown